In this video, we'll learn about difference amplifiers. These are amplifiers that accept as input two voltages and ideally produce an output proportional to the difference between them. Of course, op amps themselves are difference amplifiers, but in this section, we're interested in circuits that use op amps together with resistors to form difference amplifiers with tightly controlled gains. In general, whenever we're talking about difference amplifiers, since there are two inputs, we can define the inputs with respect to the two node voltages. Let's call them VI1 and VI2. Or equivalently, we can define the input voltages in terms of their difference or differential component, VID, and their common mode component. VICM, which we define as the average of the two node voltages. So this is just another way to represent two node voltages in terms of its difference and common mode component. We define the common mode rejection ratio of a differential amplifier as the ratio of the amplifier's differential gain, AD, to its common mode gain, ACM. That is, we expect the output to depend on both node voltages in general. So we can write it as being proportional to the differential input with a gain AD and the common mode input with a gain ACM. Now a good difference amplifier should predominantly depend on the difference. And so therefore AD should be a lot greater than ACM. The common mode rejection ratio helps us to quantify this by taking the ratio of these two gains. Typically, it's expressed in dB as 20 log base 10 of the ratio. So how can we make a difference amplifier out of an op amp? Well, here's one attempt at doing so, and we'll see it's not a very good attempt, but it'll lead us in the right direction. We can analyze this circuit very easily by superposition. First, let's consider what happens when VI1 is equal to zero. In that case, we will have a simple non-inverting configuration. With respect to the input VI2, so the output VO would simply be equal to one plus R2 over R1 times VI2. Next, we can consider what happens when VI2 is equal to zero and the only input is VI1? In this case, we would find that we've simply got an inverting configuration. And we know that the output of an inverting configuration is simply equal to negative R2 over R1 times the input, VI1 in this case. So we've almost got a difference amplifier here. If we take the superposition of these two, we would see that the output has a negative gain with respect to VI1 and a positive gain with respect to VI2. But for it to be a proper difference amplifier, it should have the same magnitude for the two gains. In this case, the gain of the non-inverting input is larger than the negative gain of the inverting input. We can fix that by simply attenuating the, the non-inverting input VI2 slightly using a resistive voltage divider before it gets to the input of this stage. So here we've done that. We've introduced the resistive voltage divider formed by R3 and R4 as an attenuator on VI2 before it gets the positive Amp, op amp terminal, which we'll call V plus. Now we can straightforwardly write V plus as a function of VI2. It's just the voltage divider R4 over R3 plus R4. From the preceding analysis, we know that VO is negative R2 over R1 times VI1 plus one plus R2 over R1 
times the voltage at the positive op amp terminal V plus. Now we can simply substitute in what we know about V plus. That is, that it's R4 over R3 plus R4 times VI2. In order to make this a difference amplifier, we have to choose the ratio of R3 over R4 to be just right so that the gain with respect to VI2 is exactly negative the gain with respect to VI1. I forgot to write the term here, VI1. So how can we make this term equal to R2 over R1? Well, we can do so simply by taking R4 over R3 equal to R2 over R1. You can substitute that back into the expression up above and confirm that the result will be VO equals negative R2 over R1 times VI1 plus R2 over R1 VI2. So now we've got a proper difference amplifier. The output is a gain constant, the differential gain AD, times the differential input voltage VI1 minus VI2, where the differential gain equals R2 over R1, which remember is the same as R4 over R3, must be taken that way in order to ensure we get a proper difference amplifier. Note also what's missing in the gain expression here. There's no term over here that depends on the input comma mode gain. That is to say, this difference amplifier has zero common mode gain. Or infinite common mode rejection ratio. You could arrive at the exact same result by analyzing the circuit directly using superposition. So here on the left, for example, we've redrawn the schematic, assuming that VI2, which would normally be located here, is equal to zero. Since, assuming an ideal op amp, there's no current flowing anywhere over here, then there's no voltage drop across the resistors R3 and R4, which means that this node voltage is at zero volts. Our virtual short circuit assumption then Put zero volt here, and the analysis proceeds just like a regular inverting configuration. Over here on the right, we consider the equivalent circuit when VI1 is set equal to zero, VI1 normally being located there. And in this case, again, we've got our Resistive voltage divider here that ensures V plus is R4 over R3 plus R4 times VI2. And the virtual short circuit assumption ensures that the same voltage V plus appears here. That gives rise to a current through R1 that has the voltage. V plus across it. Let's call it I1. I1 is V plus over R1. And the current I1 has nowhere else to go but through R2, giving rise to the voltage at the output. In this case, V plus plus the voltage drop on R2 that arises due to the current I1 flowing. If we substitute these expressions into, into this expression, 
and rearrange, we would find the exact same result that we found in the last slide. And then combining the two results by superposition would give us the same result. That is, if we take the ratio of R3 and R4 correctly, we get a perfect difference amplifier with a gain of R2 over R1. Again, the criteria is R4 over R3 should equal R2 over R1. And if we ensure that, then just as we showed before, we have infinite common mode rejection. Now, one easy choice would be simply to take R4 equal to R2 and R3 equal to R1. So in this case, this resistor has a value of R1, this resistor has a value of R2. And if we recall the virtual short circuit assumption here of an ideal op amp, that means that these two input terminal node voltages must be at the same voltage. So in that case, if we imagine a differential voltage source, VID, connected to the input of this voltage amplifier, then we would recognize right away that the resistance, the differential input resistance looking in here is simply equal to the two resistances R1 in series with each other, or 2R1. Of course, you can do a detailed analysis and find the resulting current that's flowing here, take the ratio of those two, so that would be I, ID, and VID over I, ID. That ratio is, by definition, the differential input resistance R, ID, and we could easily show that that resistance is 2, R1. So this is a good difference amplifier. But the input resistance, like, is, is similar to that of the non-inverting configure of the inverting configuration, I should say. It has a modest input resistance of 2R1. In the next section, we'll consider what it would take to make a difference amplifier that has a very high input resistance, similar to the non-inverting configuration.